A strategy Xi in Blair I strategy set is said to be strictly dominated for player I if there exists a strategy Xi dash in Si. such that so this I am writing in the language of players minimizing. So, this is x i dash comma x minus i is strictly less than u i of x i comma x minus i and this has to be true for all x minus i in the set s minus i. And what is the set s minus i? s minus i is simply the product over j of set s j, j which is not equal to i. Okay. So, a strategy x i is said to be strictly dominated for player i. If there is another strategy that is better for this player regardless of what the other players play, x i dash is always better than x i. And, and strictly so. Okay. Now, if the inequality quality above is weak, okay, that means it holds for this holds with equality for holds with equality for for at least 1 x minus i, 1 x minus i, then, then we say that then x i is said to be weakly dominated. So, that means if, if this is if this inequality here is not strict for all x minus i that means that it is going to be at least one case where some other player the other players play some profile of strategies x minus i in which player i is indifferent between playing x i and x i dash ok. There is some case where they, these are the payoffs are going to be the same in that case we say it is weakly dominated. So, so then you have a less than equal to here rather than a strict less than. Right. Now, when you have a strictly dominated strategy, then rationality directly tells you that that player will not play uh, uh, the, domi the strictly dominated one. The weakly dominated is trickier because weakly dominated just means that there is go still going to be a possibility that he will play one of these two in some case. Okay, so it's much trickier to say anything uh, uh, to say anything about weakly dominated strategy. But if you have strict dominance like this. Then rationality directly tells you that player i will uh, player i himself will not uh, not play that. Okay. Now, how to make use of this? We will come to uh, come to that in a moment. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. So I will come to that. So in fact when the when you are so this this elimination of dominated strategies right if if this uh, has has this property that so I, I i was just defining this but essentially now what you can show is the following okay now if you assume that then you can eliminate strictly dominated strategies recursively one after the other okay so long as they are available to be eliminated you can eliminate and it doesn't matter what order in which you eliminate regardless of the order in which you eliminate you will actually uh, you will actually end up with the same outcome and finally if you end up with with a unique uh, strategy profile at the end of it all it turns out that that profile has to be the nash equilibrium okay so 
if you if you can eliminate strictly dominated if you find strictly dominated strategies in such in and in such a way that you keep eliminating and finally you are left with what just one strategy profile like it was in this case right if you go out here i can now eliminate with one more level of assumption i can eliminate also l for for player 2 and then i am left with just 6 comma 2 you can check that 6 comma 2 is in fact a nash equilibrium and in fact the only nash equilibrium oh sorry sorry my mistake sorry 4 comma 3 u comma l is the nash sorry my mistake yeah 4 comma 3 you can eliminate r so for the sake of recording i'll repeat this so yeah so in this case for if you you can you can do one more level of assumption and eliminate eliminate the strategy r for player 2 and then what you are left with is then uh, is just the strategy l for player 2 and a payoff of 4 comma 3 and you can show that 4 comma 3 is in fact the nash uh, nash equilibrium and in fact the only nash equilibrium of this game okay so this is the this was our definition of a strictly dominated strategy alongside this i also need a definition for for this for this uh, this assumption that we made okay now the assumption that we made was that if you remember here we said we assumed that each player each player knows that each player is rational and then we assume that each player knows that each player knows that each player is rational okay and you can continue this uh, recursion further and further and actually go ad infinitum on this okay so and this is not just about rationality we can assume this we can make this assumption we can talk of this kind of a recursive assumption uh, knowledge for about any particular fact associated with the game all right so that is that's what i'll define right now so a fact or an event an event is said to be common knowledge among players p1 to pn if for any finite chain i1 till ik okay these guys are these are indices for players from these are from my player set the following holds Player I one knows that player I two knows that dot 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 player I K knows knows D one. Okay. Uh, this is this is the definition of an event to be common knowledge so an event is said to be common knowledge if for every sequence of that you can take you can construct this sequence of players i1 to ik you can repeat players also along that sequence you can the sequence can be of any length right and you should the following must be true that player i1 knows that player i2 knows that player I, dot 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 player ik knows that event okay now what does it mean to know is itself something i have not defined so that again needs a model we'll we'll come to that in maybe in the next lecture or something but essentially this is what it means for something to be common knowledge so when something is common knowledge it it is it it, uh, it is not only that the player know each player knows about that particular event but it is that also the other players have witnessed him knowing it okay so that the way events turn out end up being common knowledge is when there is a say a public announcement okay if there is like a, a like a traffic signal for example traffic signal everyone watches the traffic signal and everyone else also knows that everyone else is watching so whatever is is the is the is the content of that signal it is it is known to everybody and not only individually known to everyone 
everyone knows that everyone knows and everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows and so on. Okay. So, events for events basically become common knowledge when when there is a public witness of, of those events. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, things that appear in the newspaper, public announcements, etc., those are those become common knowledge. Personalized notifications on your mobile phone are not common knowledge. Okay, things that come to you alone, you the same thing may have come to others. Okay, but but it is not common knowledge because they are just knowledge of your of individuals, but not common knowledge. Is this clear? Okay. So, this is actually the uh, an important distinction it leads to one of these uh, many of these sort of uh, uh, logical puzzles uh, that you may have heard of about uh, you know muddy children puzzles and uh, and so on you can read up about this on the internet about the distinction the fine distinction between uh, each person each player knowing a thing versus that thing being common knowledge. So, and that uh, so the often the term used for this is that each when each player knows a certain thing we say that it is mutual knowledge where it each player knows that thing, but it is not common knowledge until you know all of these conditions actually hold. ok. All right. Okay. So, now uh, what what can we so now what we since we have we are talking of games of uh, you know that could have basically an arbitrary size any number of strategies. If you want to start using the properties of dominance and to eliminate strategies, effectively what we need to assume is that rationality is not only is that players are rational, but actually that rationality itself is common knowledge. Okay. When I told you also that you know when the prisoners were told this particular thing, they were uh, they were each told uh, this thing by uh, by the judge, effectively that matrix was also common knowledge amongst them. Each player knows knew that uh, knew this matrix, the other knew that he knows this matrix etcetera 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 ok. So, the standard assumption that we make in games is that play, that payoffs strategy sets uh, are all common knowledge. So, the, the those those things are common knowledge rationality whether we assume it to be common knowledge or not really uh, is a, uh, depends on the situation at hand. It is not a universal assumption, assumption that we always make in games. All right. Now, however, if rationality is assumed to be common knowledge, then you can use the properties of dominance in some cases to try and solve for the game. Okay, that's what we just did. So, I will now let, let's let me just uh, state that in the form of a, an actual theorem. Okay. So, here's the theorem. So, let let G be a game comprised of the following. So, you have n players. You have uh, set of strategies SI for those for the players. You also have payoffs UI for these players. Okay, and now suppose let G hat be this game, which is formed from the same set of players, but a different strategy set. And I'll tell you how these are related. S hat I for the players, and the same payoff functions UI. Okay. Now, s hat i is like this. So, s hat i is just the relation between s hat i and s i is that s hat i is a subset of s i and this is true for all i. Then, so essentially g hat now is a game that is formed from fewer strategies ok than the original one. Some strategies have been removed or eliminated ok. Then, if x star equal to x star 1 till x star n is a Nash equilibrium of the original game G such that x star i belongs to s hat i for all i. Then x star is a Nash equilibrium also of g hat ok. So, what is this theorem basically saying? So, suppose let g be your g be a game and then you construct another game g hat by eliminating some strategies from g right. So, the elimination is captured here s hat i is a subset of s i 
And now suppose x star is an Nash equilibrium of G. Okay, if x star is an Nash equilibrium of G, such and with the property with this property, this is this is important. With the property that x star i is in S hat i, so x star is actually feasible for the for this the game that you have formed after elimination. Okay, then x star is also a Nash equilibrium of G hat. So you have a Nash you have your original game. You have a Nash equilibrium of that game. You have another game that is formed from uh, eliminating some strategies. But after elimination, this Nash equilibrium is still present in the in the in the smaller game, right? Then the claim is that that is also a Nash equilibrium of the smaller game. Okay, and the proof is very simple. So let's just quickly do the proof. So we clearly have. So, x star is a Nash equilibrium. So, u of x star to i of x star i comma x star minus i is um, less than equal to u i of x i comma x star minus i for all x i and for all i in n. Okay. Now, since this is true for all x i in S i, this is naturally also true for all x i in S hat i because because S hat i is a is is a subset of of S i. Okay, so therefore this we have that this is x star i comma x star minus i. Is less than or equal to u i of x i comma x star minus i for all this, and also for all i in n. Okay. Now, only only thing left to argue is that these x star i is are actually in s hat i, and that is that is given to us by assumption. We have been given this, given this right here, that x star i is in s hat i. Right. So, in other words, the the point x star satisfies the conditions of a Nash equilibrium uh, uh, for for the game G hat. Okay. So, it means x star is a Nash equilibrium of G hat. So, this is all I have used here is that see ba basically player in uh, x star being a Nash equilibrium of the bigger game G, he has no incentive to deviate to any other strategy in G. And since S hat is a smaller set, is a subset of of the strategies in G, so therefore he has no incentive to deviate to any other strategy in in G hat also. Okay, and only thing for me to guarantee that I, that is left for me is to uh, is that for me to prove is that X star actually is an is available in G. It's not gotten eliminated out when you created G hat. So X star is actually available in G hat, and it has not been eliminated out. All right. So this is this is one property. So what are we learning here? We're seeing that if you if you eliminate strategies, and if the original equilibrium is available in the in the in the smaller game, then it is also an equilibrium of the smaller game. Okay, almost obvious sort of statement. Okay, so now let's let us now talk about elimination of weakly dominated and strictly dominated strategy. Now suppose G hat, let G hat be obtained. from G by elimination of a weakly dominated strategy. Now here here is a statement in this in a, so you can say roughly in the opposite direction. So G hat is now obtained from G by eliminating a weakly dominated strategy X hat J of a player J. Okay, so there is a player J who's uh, weak, who has a weakly dominated strategy X hat J. 
and that strategy has been eliminated and the resulting game is called g hat. Okay. Now, the claim is this then every Nash equilibrium of g hat is also a Nash equilibrium of g. Okay. Now, what does this mean? So, the previous theorem what did it tell you? If you eliminated some strategies and the original Nash equilibrium is still available after elimination then it is a Nash equilibrium of the new one. Okay. This theorem what it is saying is that every Nash equilibrium of the smaller set of the smaller game is necessarily a Nash equilibrium of the original game. Which means that elimination of strategies cannot create new Nash equilibrium. It can at the most eliminate Nash equilibrium but cannot create new Nash equilibrium. Okay, all right. So, what do we what is s hat now? Now, s hat has the following structure s hat for this player j, it has particular player j, uh, it has it is obtained from eliminating some dominated weakly dominated strategy, whereas for others it is the same as before. So, this is equal to so s hat i is equal to. S i for i not equal to j and it is equal to S i minus this uh, sorry S j minus this specific strategy x hat j for i equal to j. So, for i equal to j you have removed the strategy x hat j. Okay. So, for all other players i S hat i is equal to S i and for player j uh, it is equal to S j minus this weakly dominated strategy that is been removed. Okay. All right. So, now, uh, now let, let x star be a Nash equilibrium of g hat. Okay. So, which means what? That means u i of x i star comma x minus i star is less than equal to u i of x i comma x minus i star for all x i in s i and for all sorry s hat s hat i and for all i in ok. Now, this note this is for all i in x i in s hat i but s hat i is equal to s i for i not equal to j. So, that means for i not equal to j I can write this as basically this this condition forks into two places. So, i not equal to j this is actually the same as saying x i in s i and for i equal to j this is all s i except for all s j except for x hat j. Okay, all right. Now, what do we know about? So essentially, now if I want to show that x star is a Nash equilibrium of, I have started assuming that x star is a Nash equilibrium of g, g hat. I want to show that it is a Nash equilibrium of g, which means that I would have to show this for uh, this this inequality for all i. Uh, so uh, for all for all players i and for all x i in in S i. Now, for i not equal to j S hat i is equal to S i. So, there is no issue here ok. This so this this takes care of players not all players i not equal to j. But for player i uh, for player j I can only do take care of it partially because I can take care of it except for this strategy x hat j. So, I do not know if strategy x hat j could be better than basically x star x star j here right. So, but then let us see what x star x hat j actually was right. So, if you see what was x hat j, x hat j was weakly dominated. Okay, which means what? If it is since it is weakly dominated, it means that there is at least one other strategy which is better than this one, right? It means there exists and it is weakly dominated where it was weakly dominated in g right g hat has been obtained after removing x hat j. So, it was weakly dominated in g. So, that means there exists a strategy let us call it say t j in s j ok. 
such that playing tj is better than playing x hat j regardless of what the other guys play. Is this clear? So, regardless of what the others play, it is better for player j to play t j as opposed to x hat j. Okay. And I have a weak inequality here because uh, because this is weakly dominated. Okay. So, I have a great uh, this is oh sorry have I written a greater oh, my mistake here. it should be less than equal to. So, this is less than equal to yeah. So, uh, uh, t j is, be, uh, is better than playing x hat j regardless of what the others play. Okay. Now, what do I do? Well, this has this is true for all x x minus j right regardless of what the others play. So, I can actually make the others play the their star strategies from here. Okay. So, I let us let us pick these star strategies. These star strategies are in g hat remember. So, they have not been eliminated they are uh, they, uh, they are actually present in g also. Okay. So, I can make x minus j as just basically their respective starred one. So, I can just put in place of this so which means u i of t j comma x minus uh, j star less than equal to x hat j x minus j star. Okay. So, I should come back here now the definition of weakly dominated. Okay. So, here actually I should there is a small uh, there is a small error here in this definition. So, uh, the weakly dominated was that I said that this inequality could be you could have equality in one at in one right then it is when we say it, uh, it you could have equality and so, but it has to be strict for at least one a, a, a strategy cannot weakly dominate itself. Okay, you cannot have equality for all. Okay. So, if the inequality above is weak, but holds with strict inequality for at least 1 x minus i, then x i is said to be weakly dominated. Okay. So, that means you have a it is uh, this this here is replaced with a less than equal to, but there should be at least one case where there is a strict. Okay. The, the reason for the including this is basically you avoid degeneracy where you have equality throughout because then you know you can effectively start repeating strategies one after just copy pasting and repeating strategies and that uh, then they will all end up dominating each other weakly dominating each other and that creates a whole bunch of degeneracies. No, 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 we will see that one sec. All right. So, x j is weakly dominated that means there exists a t j uh, uh, t j like this. So, tell me this t j is dominate weakly dominating x j. Now, is T j okay, present in S hat j or not? Why is it present in S hat j? Yeah. Okay. This is where I needed it. Okay. So, if T j could be equal to X hat j, then T j could uh, then the, it would be a degenerate case where it is not the it is dominating itself, weakly dominating itself. Right, right. So, but this is that is a yeah, yeah, of course, that is that is a different thing. So, so this is essentially weakly dominated means that essentially it is not actually equal to this actually implies that T j is is present is is distinct from x hat j and hence T j is in s j s hat j. Now, if T j is in s hat j, it what does this mean? If T j is in s hat j, then I have this uh, this term here. This is for all x i in s hat i, right? And for all i. So, in particular, I can take x j here as T j because T j is present in s hat j, right? So, therefore, I uh, putting putting x j equal to t j gives me u i of x star 
is less than equal to sorry uj of x star is less than equal to uj of uj comma x minus j star and tj comma x minus j star is in turn less than equal to uh, j that in turn is less than equal to uj comma x hat j comma x minus j star so in other words we have we have, we have shown we, we we got this for free uh, sj minus x hat j and for x hat j also now we have shown the inequality so in other words x star is a nash equilibrium uh, all of this basically from here we conclude that this is a nash equilibrium no 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 strict inequality was for at least one of the others other strategies see for at least one x minus i this should be strict that means at least one profile of strategies that the others would play x i dash should be better than strictly better than x uh, x i right so t j is the strategy which is the dominating one and dominated is x i okay so from here then we get we can conclude that is a is an Nash equilibrium of G. What this is saying is that once you again uh, repeating that if you eliminate weakly dominated strategies you cannot create new equilibria. You could eliminate equilibria but you cannot create. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it is just to avoid this degeneracy that a strategy cannot weakly dominate itself. Otherwise, you know, you can you can end up with a lot of vacuous statements. You know, I mean, what does it mean to eliminate a weakly dominated strategy? Every strategy will weakly dominate itself, and you will keep eliminating every strategy. Right? Yeah, but then again, I can have two strategies that are completely equivalent. Yeah. Uh, with respect to the UK, the you can eliminate one of them. You can eliminate one of them if uh, as a weakly dominated one. Sorry, what? So, if we use this definition, the strategies are completely equivalent to this equilibrium, you can compare. I cannot run this argument. Yeah, yeah, you cannot. If there are two, two are equivalent. Ah, uh, yeah. So that is that is actually a case, more of a case of. Okay, yeah, I understand what you are saying. So if you have two strategies that uh, essentially are uh, identical, right? It's just a you can say. Uh, that is I think more of a case of um, uh, uh, poor form uh, problem formulation actually you have not you have just unnecessarily created another strategy when there is you know uh, concretely there is no there are in they are in different strategies. No, but regardless so the point is so regardless of what the other is playing these two strategies are identical for you right they are identical for every case that is what uh, so then you cannot eliminate no then you then then that is that is all the more reason why you cannot no 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 this is this 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 is for a player i it for the other players if they are not identical that is all the more reason why you should not be eliminated because you, you you are you are changing the strategic considerations for the other player then hmm. so you are basically saying that regardless of what you what the other player does i don't care but that doesn't mean that uh, uh, they can be eliminated you can drop one of them. The other guys care. I mean, so. <laughs> yes, yes. So that means I can drop the I can drop one of these 
if i if there is one that is strictly better for me if i have a I, if if there's a third strategy that weakly dominates these two i can eliminate these two and stick to the domin the dominating one but yes if, if then you can, in that case you cannot eliminate them i think i have an example so this this example uh, i i mean i don't know if it is actually a true story but it has been referred to in multiple um, settings i think it's appeared in some movies and all that as well so there are two paths this is called the example of the battle of the bismarck sea So there are two generals here. One is uh, this is the war between America and uh, and uh, Japan. Uh, so there are two uh, two generals who have to make decisions about which direction in which uh, in, about the direction in which they will be sending their troops. Okay, the generals are Kenny and Imamura. And I'll tell you the story. So, General Imamura has been ordered to send uh, transport troops across this sea, and General Kenny has to has been ordered to bomb the troops. All right, that is the situation. Now he has Imamura has two uh, two choices. Okay, there is uh, uh, he can go north or he can go south. The north route is shorter, the south route is longer, and uh, Kenny has to decide where to send his planes. Basically. Okay. Now, if uh, if Kenny sends planes to the to the wrong route, he can recall them, but the number of days of bombing is reduced. Okay, that is the situation. So the payoff matrix that you get is uh, you can think you can write it like this that um, okay. So this is so if Kenny goes along the north route, the north route is the shorter one. so both players are looking for the maximum so the uh, the uh, so there is nothing that so kenny doesn't have a not dom, has doesn't have any dominated or dominant strategy because here 2 is greater than you have 2 greater than 1 and 2 less than 3 okay so there's nothing that kenny can eliminate but imamura can eliminate uh, so he is uh, he is also looking for the largest value so now minus 2 is equal to minus 2 and minus 1 is greater than minus 3 ok. So, north is better than south for Imamura ok. Now, remember but weakly the north weakly dominates south not strictly ok. Now, because why now so, so Kenny can reason in this way that well Imamura I know is rational. So, he will not go south he will instead go north and when he is going north what should i be doing i should also be going north okay so what's happened is that in, this is not exactly the strat, the thing that you guys were talking about not the it's not the completely degenerate type of case but you see what has happened is imamura has ended up eliminating a weakly dominated strategy and in the and in the process effectively and knowing that then kenny knows that north is uh, is is weakly dominated if imamura eliminates that then from that logic i can then go i can also eliminate south and then and bomb him in the, in the north okay so effectively what has happened here the the uh, so so if you if you reason about it in this way Essentially, the fact that north and south are indifferent for Imamura, right, has ha, has gotten basically completely eliminated by because he has he has chosen to eliminate weakly dominated strategy. Okay, so it if you if you you can try when we go to mixed strategies and so on, we'll see that there is a better way of solving this particular game than doing this. That this is not the this is tactically not the right way to approach this. And the the fallacy is exactly in this that you are eliminating something that is weakly dominant.
and so I have not got to that yet. So when you eliminate something that is weakly dominated, okay, what you are talking about is an even more degenerate case where there are two strategies that are same, identical, okay, in terms of payoff. But even when you eliminate something that is weakly dominated, right, it is you you end up you there is a chance that you will end up eliminating equilibria. And you end up eliminating equilibria means what? There are possible strategic outcomes that you are all, you are basically letting go of. Hmm. No, no, no. See, that is not a good enough justification. That is the point. So, see, the, so we cannot, so what I, I have not completed my story yet. But basically, weakly dominated strategies will in general lead to loss of equilibria. Strictly dominated do not lead to loss of equilibria. So, strictly you can freely eliminate. Weakly you can eliminate at the risk of losing equilibria. So, at the risk of no, but loss of equilibria means that it is a strategic outcome that could have been possible which you have now let go of, right. Hmm. Hmm. It is, it is a Nash equilibrium, but there could have been another Nash equilibrium that you, that could have been better. No, but that is all that is provided all you are looking for is this particular property, right. I mean there is more to it than just that. See the point is, see weakly dominated strategy, the elimination of weakly dominated strategy is has perils with it and that is the, that is the point I will be making, uh, I will be making soon, okay.